At the beginning of all my projects, I love starting with a before video so that when we finish the project, we can look back and see where we started. It's a great reminder that you can turn any space into something beautiful with a little bit of creativity and DIY fun. The first thing I did was draw a mock-up of the design I wanted for the grids, and then I did a little bit of math to make sure I knew how far apart to put each piece of wood. Here's my little cheat sheet that I create for every project to make sure I am on task and doing everything in the right order. Now that we have done the math and have come up with a design, I am going to use electrical tape on the mirror to do a mock-up in real life of what these grids will look like. I use tape a lot in my designs just to make sure that I am obsessed with how this is going to look before I go through all that effort of cutting wood or moving furniture or spray painting, whatever it is. So that's what I'm doing here using electrical tape. It's a really easy way to get a better idea of what your design will look like. Also, shout out to all my parents out there. As you can see, I am multitasking, watching the baby and trying to do this DIY project. Thankfully, he finds it somewhat entertaining when I am doing these DIY projects. So here he is just hanging out behind me. We'll see how long this lasts. All right, now the tape is on the mirrors and I love how this design is looking so far. Here's a little behind the scenes of what my workshop is looking like right now. I decided to prop the mirror up on a table and put a tarp underneath that as well. And then I also have a baby crib in here because Jetty's gonna be joining me, I'm sure. It's time to prep for spray painting. So what I'm doing here is I am cleaning off all the metal areas by just taking some water and a little bit of dish soap and going over everything. I want to get off all of the dust, any kind of dirt, so that the spray paint adheres correctly. Next, I am using frog tape to go over all of the mirror edges. I want to get as close to the metal framing as possible because it's going to help us with cleanup. Of course, we're going to have some overspray that gets on the mirror, but the less cleanup I have to do afterwards, the better. So I'm a fan of taking my time with prep and having less cleanup afterward. <laughs> Now it's time to cover the rest of the mirror. So usually you would use floor protector paper or something like that, but I have a ton of Christmas wrapping paper that I need to get rid of. So I'm using my Christmas wrapping paper. You can use that as well. We just need to make sure that this whole mirror is covered and prevent overspray. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm tucking the wrapping paper into the tape. And the reason I like frog tape is because it actually is better for painting. I've used the blue painter's tape as well, but the frog tape works much better. Just a little insider tip if you are going to do this project.
now the mirrors are completely covered so we can move on to our next step. My husband is going to be removing some of the hardware pieces that are drilled into the closet. And the reason this is great is because anything you can spray paint outside, that is preferred because the spray paint fumes are really strong. Basically anything you can paint or spray paint outside, I would definitely recommend that. The only reason we're painting these huge mirrors inside is because they're so big and heavy. We didn't want to lug them all the way outside but it was a tough smell to get out of the house. So again, if you can do it outside, I would. Next, my husband's putting up a tarp behind the mirrors because we're gonna spray paint them upright just like this. It's way easier than trying to take them down and put them on the table. When you have heavy items like this, sometimes you just need to work with what you got. So we are putting a tarp right on the wall behind these mirrors. also going to be spray painting the rail black so I wanted to use the vacuum and just get all of the rubble and dirt out of here before we spray paint this area as well it's finally time to start spray painting we are flying through this project and we are almost done so let's get our safety gear on first thing you want to put on are your safety goggles then a mask or respirator i'm using the rust-oleum satin all-in-one spray paint i love the spray paint because it goes on really smooth so for your first coat you're going to want to make sure to go in slow back and forth motions but you don't have to get full coverage because you are going to do another coat I wanted to mention I did end up grabbing my respirator because the fumes were so strong. When you're indoors and spray painting, it's really tough with all the smells and you don't want to be inhaling a lot of this. So I did take a lot of breaks, stepping out of the room, getting some fresh air. But if you have a respirator or you can purchase one, I would highly recommend doing that for this project. Thought I would show you guys a side-by-side -side before and after just with our first coat. It's already looking so much better. We are already on our second coat that flew by, so we're gonna use the same method here, spray painting back and forth in slow, continuous motions. Save this third mirror for last when spray painting because I had one of the rails on top of it and I was using this mirror as a table. So now I'm gonna do the first and second coat on our last mirror. The frames of the mirrors are now done, spray painted, looking beautiful, as if they were meant to be this color the whole time. I can't wait to peel off this tape and wrapping paper. It's always my favorite part when I paint anything is seeing those crisp lines. So let's get to doing that right now. I kind of feel like I'm unwrapping a big Christmas present because this is wrapping paper, which makes it even more fun.
This is why we take our time during prep. As you can see, there is barely any overspray. These lines are perfectly crisp. It makes me so happy at the end of a painting project to see everything looking this clean. All right, one mirror down with barely any overspray. Hopefully the next two will be the same. Here I am creating an Instagram story. If you're not following me over there, I share a lot more of my DIY and design process in real time on my Instagram. So if you're interested in seeing more of that, you can follow me at Melly Tiana. If you do have some overspray, no worries. It should be pretty easy to get out. I just used a little bit of soap and water on a paper towel and it came off with a few wipes. And now our mirror frames are all done. They look beautiful and clean. I am so excited. I can already tell that this project is going to completely transform the look of this room. So now it's time for us to get started on our grids. We are going to be cutting a lot of trim pieces for this portion of the project. So I went ahead and brought my miter saw into the room just to make it easier to make all my cuts. Now that my first cut is made, I'm gonna make sure that this fits perfectly. One thing I noticed is the frame of this mirror is beveled. So I ended up having to use my sander to create a little bit of an angle on our trim. And once I did that, the trim fit perfectly. Now that I have my cuts, I am using a square tool to make sure everything is at a perfect 90 degree angle. And once I have that, I'm gonna make sure that the trim lines up exactly how we calculated on our first design spreadsheet. It's a little bit meticulous, this area of the project, but it is worth it because once this trim is in and glued down, it's gonna be very difficult to get off. Since these trim pieces can be a little bit flimsy, I was having a hard time seeing how all the trim pieces fit together. So I decided to grab some tape and tape them down just to double check that everything fit the way it's supposed to. Once we are done fitting everything, we can move on to spray painting the trim, gluing it down, and then we are all done. I took my trim pieces outside and I am spray painting two coats on each side of the trim. While our trim pieces are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the electrical tape that we previously used to get an idea of the design. And I'm gonna clean the mirrors off just using some Windex so that we have a nice clean surface before we glue down all the trim. Mm -hmm. 
All right, y'all, it's the moment of truth. The trim pieces have dried, so now I'm bringing them back in the house, placing them on the mirror in the grid style that we previously showed. And so far, everything's looking amazing. The trim pieces are a bit bowed. So in this case, we wanna make sure everything is glued down really well. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna tape the trim down after I glue it to make sure that the glue is sticking to the mirror and then after that, you'll see, I'm gonna put some weights, some books, any heavy items that you have around the house, you can just put that right on top to reinforce this trim. Also, I'm using clear Gorilla Glue for this project. I'll have everything linked below that I'm using in this project, but I wanna make sure you guys get clear just so that it looks really clean afterwards. You won't see any of the glue, even if it bubbles on the sides. One thing I want to mention that I wish I would have done differently, as much as I love sharing DIY projects and what works for us, I also want to make sure to share what didn't work for us so that you guys can learn from my mistakes and not do the same thing that I did. So as you can see, I am using the Gorilla Glue in this project, but I wasn't being careful about not getting the glue on the rest of the mirror. I just figured I would wipe it off afterwards and it wouldn't be a big deal. Well, it ended up being a bit of a hassle. I was able to use nail polish remover to get the Gorilla Glue off of the rest of the mirror, but it took a lot of scrubbing. And I would just say, if you can be careful and try not to get a lot of Gorilla Glue everywhere, that would be your best bet. To show you guys how I was able to make sure that everything was at a 90 degree angle. I am using my speed square as well as my tape measure. So the speed square is to make sure that the angle is correct and then I have my tape measure out because I know that both sides of the trim need to come up to a certain measurement. So both those things together are what is keeping me on track so that I can make sure I am taping these pieces down exactly where they need to be. I hope that makes sense. All right, we have glued down the trim pieces on our first mirror. Like I said, I wanted to reinforce the glue by adding some weight to the trim pieces. So I just found some household items that were heavy that I could put on here. And all of these things work just fine. And I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours before I take the tape off. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm gonna be sharing a lot more DIY projects, design, motherhood tips, 
all that fun stuff. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.